Wedding photography gives you almost every genre or style of photography in one single day. And that's why I think that it is one of the best things to learn as a beginner photographer. You have to learn how to shoot couples, families, people, obviously. You also need to be a product photographer, arranging all the details in a visually pleasing, aesthetic way. You never know when that jewelry brand or florist wants to use one of your photos in their next social media post. You need to be an event photographer, capturing the ambience of the event itself, as well as being pretty good at flash photography, all those dance floor and party photos that you need to get in often pretty low light situations. You need to know how to shoot architecture as well, kind of like real estate photography because you're shooting interiors, wedding venues, exteriors as well, all sorts of building related stuff. Last of all, car photography as well. Yes, this is a bit of a stretch, but most weddings, they seem to involve cars, especially if you've got a couple that are really into their cars, they actually really appreciate really nice photos of all the vehicles that are involved in the wedding. So I would actually suggest becoming, first of all, a second photographer for an already established wedding photographer and just offering your help for free, whether it's carrying bags, fetching lenses, batteries, memory cards, all sorts of stuff, and just learning from them, observing the way they work just as much as possible. In wedding photography, there are a lot of things that are in your control and also a lot of things that are completely out of your control as well. The bride or groom could be getting ready in a beautiful hotel room with amazing natural light. And you still have to work with the background and also the lighting to create beautiful images for them. Conversely, they could also be getting ready in the family home, which understandably on the morning of a wedding can be a very messy situation. It can be dimly lit, very crowded. You never really know what you're going to get. And oftentimes it means moving a piece of furniture or taking paintings and artwork off the wall to create a more clean backdrop. Or even like moving the entire bridal party or the makeup section of the day into a completely different room so that you have more flattering light to work with. And that's why weddings, especially for me in the beginning, were a weekly exercise in creative problem solving. You basically get plonked into a situation and you have to make the best with what you have available. And there's kind of no excuses. And this is huge for your progress as a photographer. So much of photography is just problem solving. Now, a lot of photographers say that weddings are way too much pressure. And I definitely see where they're coming from, especially if you're thrust into being the main photographer on your first, second or third wedding that you've ever shot. Having nothing at stake can be nice. It can be kind of a feeling of freedom that you can do whatever you want and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But if you're somebody who wants your progression as a professional photographer to be a six to 12 month journey versus a six to 12 year journey, then taking your progress very seriously on a weekly basis is actually really important. So my advice is to embrace that discomfort that comes with things that are very scary, like shooting weddings. Even if it's not your long-term goal to become a wedding photographer, it'll just make you a more resilient person. These photos that you're creating aren't just intended to live on a hard drive or post to your own social media. They're going to be looked at by other people all the time. They're going to be printed out and put on grandma's fridge and grace the pages of the family photo album, probably for generations to come. And you really begin to take your photography much more seriously and really begin to understand why it's so important to get to know your client and what they care about. This mindset shift really helped me to look at my work through multiple sets of eyes, not just my own scrutinizing my own images, but also looking through the eyes of the people that you're photographing for, the wedding couple, their families as well, as well as the main photographer, the person that you're shooting for, because you also need to reflect their style through your images. And if they're a photographer that cares about your growth and improving your photography, they'll actually give you some really great feedback as well that helps you progress. Hopefully, if you're working for a good photographer, that is. I was a super shy and introverted person when I shot my first wedding. Not a very social person at all. So I remember vividly the first time the main photographer at a wedding asked me to organize a group photo. So this is a photo of everybody at the wedding. And if you can imagine right after the ceremony, everyone's socializing, having drinks together, catching up. And my job was to interview interrupt everybody in order to get a photo done. And so I realized that what I'm going to have to do is 
raise my voice, get everybody's attention and get them all to move in one direction. And this kind of brought back that kind of anxious feeling. You know, when you're about to do like a presentation in front of your class in school, like all of those feelings started rushing back. So I was using the loudest voice I could, you know, trying to move people. And I wasn't really addressing the group as a whole. I was kind of going to small groups of people and asking them to move and it just wasn't working. It was like herding cats. And at this point, the main photographer on the day took over. He saw that I was struggling a little bit. He grabbed a vacant chair from the lawn, stood up on it and in the most like authoritative like teacher voice he basically got everyone to move over from the group photo and then once he got everyone into a group he started making jokes and making people laugh it was at this point i realized that i just needed to drop my ego i was so self-conscious and i was so worried about looking like an a-hole in front of all these people really it's just your job to get a result for the couple and the result in this situation was just to take a group photo i slowly learned to be more assertive to get what i want not for me but for the couple i was able to be this like calm go with the flow person during the week and then on the weekend at a wedding just flip that switch and turn into really an assertive person who is determined and my confidence like 10 x and it was because I was there to get a result for somebody else it wasn't about me it was like unlocking this superpower within myself and I wouldn't have got to this stage if it wasn't for being thrown in the proverbial deep end at that wedding being asked to organize that group photo once you shoot like 15, 20, 25 weddings, you begin to become unconsciously competent. Part of your brain that solves problems with lighting, your encyclopedic knowledge of all these different poses and sort of your knowledge of like different cultures and different traditions starts to become an asset to you. Even if you don't want to shoot weddings as your main source of income, you have a skill that will always be in demand and you have the ability to take on work from hopefully the contacts that you've built up over your time shooting weddings to supplement your career as a professional photographer, a freelancer. It's very hard to say no to because it's always a very happy working environment. You're around beautiful families, often on the most happy day of their entire life. And it's really flexible. You can say yes or no based on your availability and what's on your schedule. Plus beginning with the skill to shoot almost any discipline within photography, it really opens up your opportunities to go in a lot of different directions within the photography industry. Hopefully this video inspires someone to get out there and try wedding photography. And like I said, multiple times throughout this video, even if being a wedding photographer is not your North Star goal, it's still super fun, very challenging, and it'll make you grow not just as a photographer, but as a person as well. So you're probably thinking, okay, that all sounds great, but how do I actually get into wedding photography, being a second shooter, or maybe even getting your own wedding photography jobs? That is going to be a video for another time. So if you do want to see that video, make sure you leave it down in the comment section below. And if enough of you guys ask for it, I will make that video. But that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to make a story worth telling, and I will see you guys in the next video.